Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Adlina, uh, and, I, and I'm here, here today to talk to you about electronic fee radiation. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Yoga and Dr. Shuresh, for actually uh, calling me to come here to assist with this particular topic. Uh, I have to introduce you a little bit to why I went into electromagnetic fee radiation studies. It actually started way back in the 1990s, the late 1990s. Now, as you very well know, we have been exposed to their fields since about early 1990s, correct? And uh, then after that, Wi-Fi came about in the year 2000 plus. Now, um, the thing is that um, I, I had my suspicions that this was causing problems uh, in my children. But initially, when uh, I actually contacted, uh, now called MCMC, and actually they came to the house and they actually did measure um, the electromagnetic field radiation that was going into my children's room which was actually from the antenna that was placed on the, sec on the roof of the second floor of a shop building. It was facing directly into my son's room, my children's room. Okay, so at that time, they were measuring it. Uh, uh, they didn't have this. Okay, this now measures uh, in micro, okay, in micro levels, because at that time, they're using the normal watts per meter squared. They didn't, not in micro watts per meter squared. So at that time, when they measured that, they found nothing. Okay? They said, they showed me, say nothing, lah, doctor. Yeah. Then we, uh, around, the, uh, around 2000 plus, I bought this. And at that time, I moved my house to another house, which had a, a cell phone tower, a telecommunication tower, just 50 meters from my house. So when I bought this and I measured it, lo and behold, it, the micro watts per meter squared was measuring at about 3,000 to 5,000 microwatts per meter squared. So now, I'm going to tell you actually um, what, what I found out. From, I will not tell you what I found out from my studies. I've got five studies that I did. Uh, but I will tell you about what is scientific evidence, okay? Uh, because um, my, my publication is, have, there's only one public, public, publication from my studies. I have not managed to do much more of that because I couldn't uh, obtain a grant to continue my studies. So just to tell you, um, this is what I found uh, from the white reading that I had, okay? So bear with me for a while. I'm just going to explain to you a little bit about electromagnetic field radiation is the energy transmitted, lah, okay? It's energy transmitted at certain frequencies and wavelengths between two objects. Now, we ourselves have got electromagnetic fields, okay? Now you should you should you should note that I'm saying this is because uh, because we are moving at a certain frequency. When there is another frequency coming in, do you think it will affect you or not? And because it will be it will be coming at another frequency. Okay, so it's just you have to rationalize yourself and think. We have got our own. What are we made of? Okay, we are also made of out of atoms too. Okay, and the field that's coming in is actually moving, or vibrating, and it's actually vibrating and coming in. Okay, and it's coming in from all these devices now. Now that you're staying at home during the COVID and working from home, you are exposed to this most of the time. I am exposed to this between eight to 12 hours in a day. Okay, so what do I, so how do I feel? What do I do? Sometimes, you know, you, I'm, not, I'm not going to say what, because you know what, you ask yourself, do you have any, any effect or not? Don't you feel tired? Don't you feel it's difficult to sleep? Don't you sometimes get palpitations? Then you say to yourself, it may not be due to this. It may be due to other things. But the, the thing is that we have to also, okay, there you need scientific evidence, but we also, also ask to, I have to ask ourselves, what does our body say? Okay, right. Of course, these ones, you know, a high voltage transmission line, there's got a lot of uh, the, the effect you already know. But the ones that is actually still controversial is those that coming from the tel telecommunication antennas. Okay, right. Now, it, the, the thing is that uh, this particular, um, this particular uh, electromagnetic field radiation is actually uh, the type of non-ionizing. Not, it's not like X-ray, whereby you definitely know that has an effect. So this is, this is actually like something like microwave. So you know microwave also, you cannot stay in front of it. You're not supposed to. There is a mesh there to protect you against the microwave inside it, okay? Right. Okay, so uh, just listen to, okay, just imagine yourself to be uh, in this environment for eight to 10 hours in a day. 
because this is what actually is the sound of what you are experiencing daily. The tower, which is about 150 meters away from your house. Okay, you can hear the sound. Imagine you hear that sound every day. Okay, it is a complex combination of high pitch whine and irregular rat tat tat. Okay. Modem. <laughs> the one that you have your Wi Fi modem all around. in your home. your smart meter and this is the cell phone on the couch producing the right tat tat sound okay and it is actually your chair that like I'm doing right now so just imagine this is happening okay and you can imagine that you know, how it is your know, how would your body respond to that if it was something that you could hear it every day I'm sure you're not going to sit there for a very long time okay now on the 31st of May 2011 the International Agency for Research in Cancer did say that um that uh, they designated the cell phones, eh, your cell phones, as being a possible human carcinogen because they found an increased evidence of glioma and acoustic neuroma. All right. Now, on the 16th October 2013, uh, the IARC also assist, told the WHO to adjust it to class one carcinogen, but they never did that. Okay. And this was actually from uh, Huddle and Cover. Now, uh, there is this thing called electromagnetic hypersensitivity, which actually can induce people who are sensitive. It's something like an allergy. You can get from mild symptoms to very severe symptoms, such that they have to change their lifestyle. These are the characteristics of that, this, that problem, but it has been debunked by WHO. Until today, this has not changed. They say there is no such thing as a clear diagnosis criteria for this health problem. There is there any scientific basis permitting the connection of EHS symptoms to EMF exposure? Okay. Now, if supposing it is true that EHS is not connected to electromagnetic field radiation, then why did in 2011 the Parliamentary Assembly Council of Europe adopted a report by the European Committee for Safety of Non-Ionizing Radiation about the potential dangers in electromagnetic fields and their effect on the environment, saying that they, you have to pay particular attention to electrosensitive people. Can okay, I remember that the one that 2005 WHO did not change? Okay, right. Now, this was uh, from the uh, Furstenberg document, which I've taken, and you can actually look at it. Uh, they have not changed it since uh, it was first published in 2011. Uh, it's the it's document number 272. And if you go to the website, you can read about the shocking truth about electricity and EFFs. Arthur Furstenberg, he is also the author of The Invisible Rainbow and explains the relationship between our health and electricity and EMFs. If you look here very clearly, you will see that you will see that at around uh, 1,000 microwatts per meter squared is that the neurological system will start to be affected. Some links have been made with Alzheimer's and EMFR, but uh, 
like I said, the studies that have been published, a lot has been debunked. Okay, so uh, what is the most that is scary is the leakage of blood brain barrier at around 10,000 microwatts per meter squared outwards. Okay, now these are the biological effects. Uh, there are actually 13, well, sorry, 14, and you can read it up later on, okay? And some of this, uh, I'm sure some of you are having this, okay? Because you're spending so much time in front of the field right now, okay? So and uh, these are some uh, some others effect, okay? Uh, I have tinnitus actually. Um, uh, I've had it since about uh, 10 years ago, okay? And just to tell you that I'm very interested in this topic because my mother died of leukemia just about two years ago, okay? Uh, she had died of cancer. Okay. Now, this one was uh, in India, okay, the Usha Kiran building, whereby they found that the cell tower that was opposing into this building, they found there were six cancer cases in the consecutive force of five, six, seven, eight, and ten. Okay. Now, uh, in Brazil, uh, this, they had a, they did a study and uh, actually they found a greater risk of cancer if you live within 500 meters, not 150 meters, but 500 meters of a cell phone antenna or tower. Now, um, I have to give tribute to Jimmy Gonzalez because he's one of the persons that actually uh, actually suffered from cancer and he, he, he is the one that actually we are sort of, of, um, uh, sort of following now because, uh, but he passed away recently. So uh, let's see if I can turn this on. I always held it in my left hand, up against my left ear, and I carried them around in my suit jacket's inner pockets. Lo and behold, if you were standing close to me, you'd see that there's a scar on my left hand, the result of nerve tumor removal surgery. If you can see the scar on the left side of my head, that's the result of brain cancer surgery on August 23rd, 2011. That's glioblastoma multiform level four. On top of that, I have an MRI that shows a tumor at my aortic bifurcation, right where my cell phone sat in my suit jackets. So that's one, two, three results of having a cell phone against my body. If you don't agree, just read through the booklet that was in the box when you bought your cell phone. If you have the time to dig through those 200 or 300 pages, somewhere in there, you'll see that your cell phone emits a type of non-ionized radiation. So this is what I'm, uh, is the, some, if you read, if you read, okay, your booklet in your handphone, okay, for Blackberry, you see this warning. Okay, and the one that is <laughs> very prominent is that uh, for pregnant women, they don't actually advocate at all. Okay, so use hands-free operation if it is available. Use hands-free operation if it is available. I repeat, and keep the BlackBerry device at least 0 0.98 inches from your body, including the abdomen of pregnant women and the lower abdomen of teenagers when the BlackBerry device is turned on. Okay. Now that you have the Wi-Fi, please do not turn on your um, Wi-Fi <laughs> uh, on your phone when you're not using it. Okay, I tell all my students when they come to class to off everything, put the phone on the floor. Okay, because I know they have their phone inside their pockets. And sometimes when I give them lectures, sometimes they are on their phone. Okay, so this is the thing about, about, about handphones. We are so addicted to it. If it's not on our body somewhere, we are just, you know, we feel that we are missing something, all right? So, but this is, this is in itself shows that actually it's important to actually not be too close to your handphones, okay? Now, this serenade study has been debunked also again, okay? Because it is a case control, it is not a forward-looking one. That means it's not a, a, a prospective study. So, because it was case control, they actually, they actually, actually did not find an association, okay, between brain tumors with between those who are users and non-users. But they just found an association between the heaviest mobile users and those who did not use it so much. Okay, there was a significant difference, meaning that there was a higher risk in people who were using the phones more than the people who are not using the phones so much. Okay. 
And then they did, and there were some more studies after that that found that um, uh, persons who have used cell phones for at least a decade have 30% to more than 200% more brain tumors compared with those who don't. Okay. Now, um, if supposing your, it is true that uh, uh, electromagnetic field reservation from handphone doesn't cause tumors, then why is it that a lot of legal uh, um, cases actually did win? Okay, and it was a, testimonies was allowed. This one was in two zero one five, whereby uh, this uh, this report, the, okay, the WSJ report uh, that. Uh, that uh, they allowed the testimony from the scientists uh, to actually talk about whether EFF, e, the electromagnetic field radiation actually caused injury and had any health effects. Okay, and uh, our famous uh, Bollywood actress, the okay, Juhi Chawla, has actually been campaigning for a more stringent mobile tower policy for many years, and she. And activist Prakash, when she actually filed a public interest litigation in the Bombay High Court in 2015, it's coming into legalities now. Okay, now earlier, uh, earlier in 2012, the Rajasthan High Court had held mobile phone towers as a health hazard, and they actually even asked operators in the state to remove the towers in close proximity of hospitals, schools, colleges, and playgrounds, or to relocate them. Now in 2017, the Italian court. Okay, they recognize causal link between cell phone use and brain tumor. And this and in 2017, they ruled and awarded a telecommunication employee, Roberto Romeo, lifetime damages of 500 euros a month after he developed a brain tumor from 15 years of exposure to cell phone. So if suppose it's not true, then why are these allowed? Okay, why did this pass the legal system? Okay. Now and there's another one which is actually uh, in this is in India again. Okay, uh, again, not only the court ruled for this, this um, Harish Chandra Tiwari had Hodgkin's lymphoma, and the court ruled in his favor, and they also asked the tower to be deactivated. This was from cell, cell telecommunication tower. Okay, I'm sorry, there is a little bit of a noise at the background there. Okay, now in, okay, this one was uh, by Rob, uh, Ronald uh, Herberman. He said that in summary, his review of literature suggests that most studies claiming there is no link between cell phone and brain tumors are outdated, had methodological concerns, and did not include sufficient numbers of long-term cell phone users to find an effect. Since most of these negative studies primarily examine people with only a few years of phone use, and did not inquire about cordless phone use. Okay? So then, so therefore, you are going to ask me, so then how, doctor? What do we do now? So this is what you do. There has been much debate on the risk of electromagnetic fields from cell phones and Bluetooth devices related to the risk of cancer since the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields from cell phones as possibly causing cancer in humans. In lab studies, it has been shown that electromagnetic energy like that of cell phones, can cause cellular damage through increased oxidative stress, which, in turn, can cause DNA damage. Evidence from studies of populations show mixed results as far as cell phones causing cancer, but there appears to be an association between long-term cell phone use, i.e. greater than 10 years, and a malignant brain tumor called a glioma, as well as a benign tumor of the nerve supply in the ear called an acoustic neuroma. This association may be somewhat weak, but given the large number of cell phone users throughout the world, estimated to be 5 billion people by the end of 2019, cell phone use could potentially cause a significant number of tumors that might not otherwise occur. Given the fact that there is evidence that long-term cell phone use may be associated with the development of certain tumors, it is best to evoke what is called the precautionary principle meaning adopting a precautionary measure when scientific evidence about an environmental or human health hazard is uncertain and the stakes are high. In this case, it is electromagnetic fields emitted by cell phones and the long-term risk of certain cancers. At this point, our understanding of the risks of electromagnetic fields emitted from cell phones is incomplete, 
but there is some evidence pointing to a possibility of an increased risk of certain brain tumors with long-term cell phone use. What about Bluetooth wireless headphone devices? A recent study looked at the power density exposure, which is the rate of power that an electromagnetic field produces per unit area of Bluetooth headphones versus cell phones. They found that the power density exposure for Bluetooth headphones was 10 to 400 times lower than those of cell phones. Thus, the dangers reported in the media about Bluetooth headphone use are not at all clear. At this time, there's not enough data to conclude with any degree of certainty that there is or is not an increased risk of cancer with Bluetooth headphone use. Accepting the precautionary principle, there are several steps you can take to minimize electromagnetic field exposure from cell phones. Text whenever possible. Use the speaker option holding your phone 8 to 12 inches away from your head. Make calls short or use a wired headset. As far as using Bluetooth wireless headphones, the choice is yours. If you want to be on the safe side and minimize electromagnetic field exposure, use a wired headset. An important point to remember is that there are many other lifestyle factors that can reduce your overall risk of cancer, and that reducing electromagnetic field exposure is only a small part of a cancer risk reduction strategy. In order to fully leverage lifestyle strategies for cancer risk reduction, I advocate the following. Maintain a normal body weight, eat a mainly plant-based diet avoiding processed and fast foods, learn to manage stress through breathing exercises or meditation, get seven to nine hours of quality sleep every night, exercise daily for at least 30 minutes, get outside every day and enjoy nature, be compassionate to yourself and love yourself. Enjoy energetic and nurturing social relationships, cultivate a spiritual practice, limit alcohol consumption, and if you use tobacco products, quit. Okay, so, um, so in using handphones, living near telco towers and using Wi-Fi, is it safe? So if you want to follow the precautionary principle, these are the things that you have to follow. Number one, please do not give a handphone to your child who is below 12 years old. Limit the usage of Wi-Fi, okay? And of course, everything that he said just now, okay, and all these things that's already there, if you're staying near a telco tower, then you need to do a few more things, okay? But that is another, a different thing to talk about, and you may just uh, maybe contact me directly for that. Okay, now, Dr. Selfer has also called the use of cell phones by human beings as the largest biological experiment ever. Those who might normally have got Alzheimer's dementia in old age now, can, it seems, can get it much earlier. Perhaps putting a mobile phone repeatedly to your head is something that might not be a good idea in the long term. Okay, so what about Telco Towers? There is 150 meters in USA, it's 300 meters in Germany. They are, these places do not allow Telco Towers in schools. Hospitals, all those areas, okay, they don't allow, okay, and this is actually our. Uh, I when I was advocating for the telco towers, I was advocating this, but um, it was not taken up, and uh, yeah, so it's a bit difficult, uh, okay. So I will not talk about this because uh, this will be another lecture altogether, which is about one and a half hours long, okay. So uh, just in summary. Okay, of the uh, literature review suggests that most studies claiming that there is no link between cell phones, okay, is outdated. So we, are, we, 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 we must remember that we have to use the precautionary principles and please protect the mothers who are pregnant and your children, okay? Right. Prevention is always better than cure and until proven otherwise and technology becomes safe, children in 20 should not be using mobile phones so much, not so much to expose so much also in, in the homes from the computers and all that, if it's possible, okay? But if you cannot, then what can you do? You have to protect yourselves. And these are some of the things that you can do. Um, you remember that song he said, go and, 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 and go into nature. What, one of the things that you can do is what is called erding, which is actually you just open your shoes with barefoot, just the stand on the soil or the grass or in or on the ocean, uh, not the ocean uh, beach, okay, or on the beach for at least 10 to 15 minutes, okay, maybe a, about once or twice a week, right? And I would like to acknowledge this lecture. These are the people that have actually have helped me since nine in the since uh, the year 2000. Uh, I've, uh, I've been actually 
working on this form in the sense of uh, research and all that. Okay, um, I am going, okay, so as you can very well know, uh, you want to change to happen, we have to work together. And this is where I'm asking if everybody can come in and help to actually get this, this particular uh, thing moving and that we can do more research. And in the meantime, uh, I have got my radio next here. This is from Germany, by the way. And also the, uh, this, this is supposed to actually reduce it. Okay, uh, and I put it beside me when I'm working, all right? And this one I put under my bed when I'm sleeping, okay? So these are some of the things, okay? So it's up to you to see what, to decide from what I presented, whether does it have any effect or not, and what you should do. Thank you very much. Let's switch back to you. All right, thank you, Prof. Um, wow, very enlightening, Prof. Thank you. So um, before we go to uh, Prof. Banchok, who's already standing by there. Hi, Prof. Banchok. Good morning. Um, there are a few questions. Uh, there are a few questions for you, Prof. Adlina. So I think we'll take the questions first. Yeah. yeah. So then we can go to Prof. Banchok after that. So the first question I have here is: uh, early on on your in your presentation, yeah. um, you showed us uh, EMFR uh, detector, right? That's correct. So the question from one of our attendees here, Miss Irene, was asking, "Where can we get it?" Actually, the oh, good question. Uh, uh, you, you, you can just uh, look at the uh, look at just go to Google and just uh, ask for TES ninety two. It's called TES ninety two. Okay. TES it's about a thousand plus. Okay. A thousand. It's about oh, thousand. Wow. Yeah. When I bought it. Now I don't know. It could be less or it could be more, but they have come up with the new version of this. This was bought about um, 15 years ago, I think. Oh, wow. okay. uh, yeah, but it's still good. And I use it for my studies because when I do my studies, I go to places that has no less than 200 microwatts per meter square, which is the one that's actually advocated by WHO for indoors. So, I see. Yeah, so I use this. I see, okay. Okay, thanks uh, for that, uh, Prof. Uh, Adina, there's another question here um, from uh, Siu Hua. She says, soak feet to salt water. How long, you know? Uh, how long and also the, the warm I, water. Okay. How long no, do we need to soak? No, no, no. Okay, you can use salt water, but it is better to use, just go to the, just go to your garden. If there is grass there, make sure that it's clean. Then open your shoes and just stand on your soil for 10 to 12, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. okay. I, I go to Port Dixon because the beach is just 17 minutes from my house. So sometimes uh, I also uh, try and go every week, but I have not gone for more, almost a month now. So I just go to my garden and just put my shoes and just stand there. But just make sure that there's no, no dog poo or, or cat poo there. Okay, just make sure it's clean. Okay. So, yeah. So you can just do that. Oh, you uh, like sometimes what I do is I take a piece of cloth and I put it on there and I stand on it. So that's how you can, that's a called erding. All right. Is all there the any... Yeah. Sorry, sorry, carry on. So all the bad, so it seems that all the electricity that uh, can go down, it's like your, it's like your, it's just like your, your plug. It's got an erding wire, uh, that's the same thing yourself because you are made of atoms and you have got electricity and you're absorbing all these radiations, so you want to get rid of it, so you go and earth yourself. Okay, that's all. What it means, okay. This is a new science, uh. This is going to be integrative, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. No, but uh, this don't ask me the scientific um upper applications of this because this is this is what I learned from my friends who are in electromagnetic field radiation studies and all that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Wonderful. So, is, is there any particular time frame? We do it one hour, one minute, five minutes. How long is enough? They say ten to fifteen minutes. Oh, okay. Ten to fifteen minutes. So. Yeah. So I, our kids playing outside 15 minutes, 30 minutes with their friends and even longer is amazing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please ask your children to go out. Yeah, it's not a matter of uh, get all these things. So it's also, uh, it's a huge part of health and getting a vitamin D. Uh, yeah. They have come across in Malaysia, people who got vitamin D deficiency, even though we are a tropical country. So where in the world, that means your, our children are not going out. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the problem. Okay, one more question is, uh, uh, for example, living near TNB power stations. I know you shared some already in your in your in your slide, but there, there is this. I mean, even local. I mean, I am buying a house also, and I think a lot of our attendees when they buy a house, one of the things you see is how far is the TNB stations and all that from us. So sometimes 
I hear stories that they say 50 meters is fine, 100 meters is fine. So you're saying that the guideline normally is 150, but cases have been shown where 500 meters will still get affected. So um, what's your suggestion? What's your suggestion? In Malaysia, the, 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 the guideline is only 30 to 50 meters only. Okay, oh, if from the Telco Towers as well as from the TNB line. Okay, so that's, but the TNB line, actually, the electricity line, the high power electricity line, actually, uh, it has been actually advocated. It should be actually three, uh, three to five kilometers away. Wow. More than your, your cell, uh, telecommunication towers. Okay. Okay, again, there's this disclaimer. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yoga, for giving the disclaimer. So you please read up. These are all inside uh, in the internet and all that. But the, the one that was uh, the one that told me about three to five, because my house is about um, 3.5 kilometers from electricity tower right now. My old house was behind, a, uh, behind the house was a telco tower, which was just about 50 meters. Mm. So um uh it is not uh, a general ruling here the, in the country it is not put as a 150 meters 300 meters it's not so that's why the taco towers is being set up even in housing areas oh wow okay all right um one more uh, one more question uh, prof the last video you showed us uh, the uh, one of the viewers uh, wants to know what was the name of the speaker you do you recall the last that. video sorry Dr. Stodat. Dr. Stodat. Yes. Okay, Dr. Stodat. All right. I uh, just one more, one more, one more question, uh, Prof. Uh, there are also statements I hear where people say, if you off your, if you on your airplane mode, you know, yeah, you know, that reduces your EMF from your phone. Is that true? Off your phone at night. <laughs> off your phone at night. So I must tell my wife. You off need your App, why you want to put the you put upload F airplane mode? It's still turning off the phone, isn't it? So what's yeah. the point? Because no. nothing can cut it anyway. So just turn it off. So that means the airplane mode does reduce and does cut off the EMF. Cut off everything because that's why it, that's why when you're in the plane you cannot do calls, isn't it? You have to put airplane mode. Okay, but it's the same thing as you off your phone. Right. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. And there is just one more. Let me just see. One more question here is. Well, so sleeping is already answered. Um, okay, so you know when we go for medical tests and some people go for MRI, CT scans and all that stuff, one dose of that, okay, is there an equivalent one dose of that is like how many years of, you know, handphone exposure or something? Is there some kind of a... Hard to say because that dose are ionizing. So ionizing is different from non-ionizing. This one is non-ionizing. This one, it takes a long time for things to happen. I have not gone into the science of the changes that occurs in your blood when you are exposed to non-ionizing for a long period of time. There have been studies done that actually shows that there is changes in your blood. It can cause hyperglycemia. It can cause a decrease in protein. A lot of things. But I have not gone to that because the topic for today is about cancer. Like I said, if I want, you want me to give a talk about electromagnetic field radiation, I need, I need at least two hours because there's so many things to talk about. So right. maybe some other time in another platform, maybe Suresh or Dr. Yoga can invite me again and maybe we can talk about it for a longer period of time. Correct, correct. Uh, just, can I just give you one last question, Prof? Is that okay? Sure, sure. Okay, so um, it's, a, it's an interesting question as well. Since we cannot really move house as much as we like or as quickly as we want, especially now, what can we do in our home to protect ourselves? Yeah, uh, there are called there are devices that's called uh, that actually can can ride over the waves uh, and actually not affect the quality of the 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 um, electromagnetic field coming in. This these devices uh, it seems like, Okay, I really don't know because uh, I I did not do any study on them. These devices are called wave riders. They actually uh, cancel out the effect of the Electromagnetic field radiation without causing any reduction in the power. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can buy those and you can protect yourself. And of course, uh, like, like I said, uh, uh, you can get all these type of things that's available in the market. All right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, sometimes, but then some people say it's just psychological. I really don't know. Uh, some studies have been done by the companies themselves. So you can try that and just put these devices in your home. The other one is, of course, uh, um, uh, you can actually put, okay, uh, this one, uh, uh, mosquito nets. 
if you put mosquito nets against your windows, it does reduce the thing coming in. I think it breaks it up. So that's why I've, I've actually measured using this with no mosquito net uh, uh, and with it. And it actually, uh, it's actually lower. So yes. maybe you can try all these things. It's actually like putting up a steel barrier, you know, like you don't want to block, you know. You know, mm -hmm. this blocking of radiation from the nuclear exposure and something like that. So to, that means you're blocking it with steel and all that. So it, it does do that. So these are several things you can try and do. Lah. Okay. And uh, the children, if they're sleeping on a bed, and uh, said, uh, said the, the, uh, that there was one that one house that I went to where the child was sleeping and the, the headrest was actually behind there was the tower. Okay, the tower was coming in. So what, what the family did was that they put uh, aluminium foil on the aluminium foil against the headrest so that when the child sleeps, it doesn't go through. So we measured that with the aluminium foil and without it. So these are many things that you can you can try and do. If you're living in an area with Taco Tower, you cannot move out. So because you've already bought the house there, okay? But I actually moved out of my house in where I was staying, where it was very near Taco Tower. Okay. And in my area where I was living in in PJ the other time, there were about 30 antennas facing all around the, the, the area. And when you go out into the house, this read 5,000 to 8,000 microwatts per meter squared. Wow. Okay. Safety limit is 200. Huh? So whenever you go out of the house, you start getting dizzy and busy. And you know, so my daughter is EHS sensitive. She can detect a tower before you, she even sees it. So if you see the car, say, Ma, we are heading towards a tower. And true enough, you turn the corner, and there's a tower there about, about 500, 300, 500 meters away. So you, know, so you can say to me that it doesn't affect. I would, I'm, so, I'm so sorry because um, I've been doing this since uh, more than 20 years. I've been right. doing research and all that. I just feel that um, there's probably, there is an effect. So we take the precautionary measure. All right, cool. Uh, so I've got other questions, but yeah, we are running short of time. I'm sorry uh, to the attendees, uh, but do give us your questions and uh, we'll try to forward to our panelists and uh, hoping we can get some uh, responses as well. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, wonderful, very enlightening. Um, wow, a lot of changes we have to make, I think. Yeah. So thank you once again. Wonderful.